I must apologize up front for the length of this video. I have no idea how long it will be. But in the video about the Elgrow Grow Cube, I mentioned that there is a way to get plant information inside Home Assistant without, for example, using Elgrow's app. Not that that app is bad, but there are open source versions and you can both contribute to the database, but also get that information inside Home Assistant. For that, first of all, we will need to hook up or create account on the Open Plant Book, hook it up to Home Assistant, then we will be using alternative plant integration inside Home Assistant that allows us to customize things more freely and, of course, this one also pulls data from the Open Plant Book. And the last part is, yes, visualization of the data or the UI. So once again, I'm sorry, but I really do hope that it will be worth your time. We'll start in a couple of seconds. All the links to everything will, as always, be down in the video description. And without further ado, let's jump straight into the what we need to do, because we don't want to waste time. First thing we have to do is create a free account on the Open Plan Book. This account will allow us then to get the API key, and we will need that API key inside our Home Assistant. But before we continue, let me first say thanks to Slava Pisarevsky, the author of this web service, for creating it, because it will help you, smart home user, if you are also plant enthusiast. So, thank you. On the Open Plant Book main page, we have to create first account. Click on Sign In, and you have option to create single sign-on account by using Google or GitHub, but instead I will create account with username and password. Enter the username, email address, password, and also double-check the password that is correct. You have to agree with the terms and click on Register. Once the account was created, click on Login and, of course, Login into account. Then we have to go to the API keys, and this is needed step if you want to use it inside Home Assistant. Click on Generate to create new tokens. And these are the client ID and client secret we will be using inside Home Assistant. So, first step is done. Next thing we need to do is create integration between Open Plant Book and Home Assistant. And for that, we will be using this integration created by Olen. And don't forget to say thanks to him by either clicking the star or sponsoring him in any other way. And this is not the last time today we'll be talking about the integration created by Olen. So thank you Olen multiple times. This integration can be installed via the hacks or you can install it, of course, manually. Since it is not still part of the official hacks integrations list, you will have to copy the URL of this GitHub repository, and we will then use that one inside Home Assistant. In Hacks, go to Integrations, Three Dots, Custom Repositories, paste the URL of the repository, category is Integration, and click on Add. This will add this repository to the list of known repositories and will allow us to install it. Let's close this. And now you can either browse the list and find Open Plan Book, or you can click on Explore and Download and type Open Plant Book to install Open Plant Book integration for Home Assistant. Click on Download, Download, and next step, since this is integration Home Assistant, we cannot just simply reload the UI, we will need to restart Home Assistant. But since we still have one more integration to install, let's first install that integration, and then we will need to restart Home Assistant just once. And that integration, once again from Olen, is called Alternative Plant Component for Home Assistant or Home Assistant Plant. Home Assistant already has plants integration inside it, and I did create a video about it. I think also mentioned it in a lot of videos. That integration allows you to use multiple sensors to create a plant sensor. In the original integration Home Assistant, which is done through the YAML file, you then specify specific sensors, for example, for the temperature, for the humidity, for the soil humidity, for the fertilizer, minimum, maximum values for the humidity, minimum, maximum values for the LUX, if you have a LUX sensor, etc, etc. And based on that, you can then use plants card inside Home Assistant to show what is the current state of the plant. If any value is under or above certain threshold, that value will be red. And then you can use that to possibly monitor the state of your plants. 
but we don't want to do things manually, we don't want to use YAML code, we want to automate things, and that's why we are going to install this integration inside Home Assistant. Once again, this integration is not out of box available through Hacks, so we will need to copy the URL. It will be down in the video description and paste it inside Hacks Integrations and create custom repository. Inside Hacks Integrations, click on three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL of the repository, category will be once again integration, click add, and now once again, either by clicking on the name in the new repository list or by clicking button, type in plant, and install Home Assistant plant integration. Click on download. The latest version at the time of the recording is version 2024.7.0. Click download. And now finally we can restart Home Assistant. Now that Home Assistant has restarted, we can finish the setup and configuration on each of the components we installed. First we will start with this open plant book integration. For that we need to go to Home Assistant, click on add integration, type in open, and search for Open Plant Book Integration. Click on it, and we will have to copy client ID and secret that we created in the previous step. When you copy them from the Open Plant Book API page, click on Submit. And now let's click Finish. You will not find any devices or entities here, but there is one configuration option that I do recommend maybe that you use. Click on Configure, and you can automatically download plant images. But remember, this folder needs to exist. Inside your configuration folder, you need to have, for example, or in this case, www, then images, then plants. And this is how it looks in my setup. I have www folder, images, and underneath folder plants. Click on automatically download plant images, finish. This should be it. Open plant book integration will create a couple of services. For example, clean cache, get, search, and you can use that for searching of the components. For example, search, search for a string, dipses, and we have two flowers that match the name dipses. Then after you've found the name of the plant that you want to get info for, you can copy the name of the plant and use open plant book get to get specific data for that plant. And it will give you alias, category, PID or ID, maximum light, minimum light, temperature, humidity, soil moisture, etc. plus of course the image URL. And that way you can pull data from open plan book to your home assistant. <laughs> but this is manual work. What we want, we want to integrate this with the alternative plant monitoring sensor that we just installed. If you've previously added home assistant internal YAML sensors, plant monitoring sensors, these will be automatically converted when you first restart your Home Assistant. I do have, I think, six, seven or eight of them, and we will now check what happened with them. The good thing is that after this part is done and we check that everything is working, you can remove the existing YAML configuration for the plants. Settings, Device and Services, Plant Monitor, and we have here nine plant sensors. If we click on Configure, for each of the sensors, you can specify the species, what to display, the URL, it will automatically be populated if you download the image, and then you can use any of those values as triggers inside Home Assistant to warn you that something is wrong with the plant. For example, this can be illuminance, daylight integral, air humidity, temperature, soil moisture, or conductivity. So these are the sensors that I already have pre-configured. Some of them are ESP home and it will take up to two hours for them to report the values. Others are Zigbee one. For example, this one here is a Zigbee plant sensor and I believe also this one here. So let's see how you need to set up everything. Let's take first this one here, Hydrangea. Let's go to developer tools. I will search for that plant and there are a lot of plants with that same name. I think that correct name for the one that I have is this one here. I will paste it here, force refresh data from open plant book and click on submit. As you can see, this time it pulled the image for the plant here, so we can also use that value inside Home Assistant. And if we look at device with 20 entities, we have here the image of the plant, which is in the state OK. We have information about the air humidity, conductivity, two light sensors, soil moisture and temperature sensor. Plus the configuration part for the sensors has also been pulled 
from the open plan database. These values here match the values on the open plan database, or this value here. But there are some sensors that I do not have on that plan sensor, because that's just a dummy Zigbee plant monitor sensors that only has soil, moisture and temperature. For example, air humidity. I do not have sensor on the plant sensor, but I do have balcony. This plant is on balcony. Balcony sensor that does provide me with the balcony humidity. There is a service call for that. Let's go to developer tools, services, plant. For example, this Hydrangea air humidity, which I do not have, can be replaced with the balcony humidity and call service. And now, even if my plant sensor doesn't have that value, I can still get it from the external sensor. These are the things that you usually set up once, because you hopefully don't kill plants as often as I do, and they will live long and happily. Now we have ability to create specific custom plant sensors, to configure them through a UI. We've connected everything with the open plant book web service, but what about the UI? That part is still missing. Yes, once again, Olen with the Lovelace flower card. Don't forget to start the repository to say thanks. This hex component, once again, is not available directly from the hex, so we will need to add custom repository. This one will be front-end. For that, we need to copy the URL. It will be down in the video description. In hex, click on front-end, three dots, custom repositories, paste the repository URL that you just copied, select category Lovelace, and click on Add. This has now been added to the list of known Hux repositories, so you can either browse the repository list here, or click on Explore, type in Flower, and install Flower Cards. Click on Download, Download, at the time of the recording the version is 2024.7.14, and click Reload. In the UI where you want to monitor your plants, click on the pencil to add a dashboard, add cards, type in Flower, for custom flower card, select plant, we want to have full card, or you can have compact card. I will go with a full card. You can select if you want to hide or show any bar, for example, moisture, conductivity, temperature, illuminance, humidity, or daily light integral. I will remove daily light integral, illuminance, and also conductivity, since those are the sensors that I do not have. Click on save. And now you have a beautiful card that tells you that moisture of the earth is okay, the temperature, outside temperature is also inside the range, but unfortunately the humidity in the air is just too humid. Nothing I can do about that. While this is still not finished, some of the sensors haven't loaded, I didn't update everything, but here is how my plant sensors would look in Home Assistant if everything would be set up. For each of the plants you would see specific data that is pulled from the database and then matched with the state of the entities from Home Assistant. That way you can visually see if any plant is having issues. For example, the air is too humid for these two plants or these three plants, and this plant also has too much water in the soil. And in terms of the state of this device, it is currently shown problem, and if we check on attributes, we can see the name of the species and what values are okay, what are unknown and what are too low or too high, in this case moisture status and also humidity status. And this also allows you to create automations that would warn you if, for example, values are too low or too high for the specific plants. I really do hope that you did enjoy the components I presented in the video. Don't forget to give likes or stars to the GitHub repositories for all of the components here and also if you can try to support the open plan book. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to any of the components I've shown here today in the video, please drop them down in a comment section below. I know that I've cut a lot of corners, but we had a lot of things to install and configure, so I do hope that you still find this video useful. And if you did find it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, because it will tell YouTube that this video is good and that more people should see it. And also, while you are already there, check that you are subscribed. If not, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss on the future video releases and of course the streams. And before I end up the video, I would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, commented, liked and shared my videos. Thank you. 
if you do want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and I'm off to vacation.